Ai, mãe, 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 Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dr. David Simmons. This is Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus is king of the cowboys and everybody's welcome. What that means is God has no respect for persons. We're glad you're here. Listen to the word today because the word of God will change your life. The Bible tells us that it's in the inspired word of God. It was given for correction for instruction in righteousness and so we have to remember that it will change our life every time we hear it by the washing of the water of the word so listen to the word enjoy it and I'll talk to you at the end Shalom Shalom Peace be unto you Really? Shalom. Shalom means peace. It means wellness, wholeness, walking in the fullness of the Father God. Just a little bit hot, Mr. Harvey, just a little bit. So when someone says shalom to you, they're giving you a great, great greeting. It's a good word, okay? It's a good word. What you respond back to them, that's something different. But, but you can uh, enjoy that. We're going to read. I'm going to pray first. I think, I think we just need to pray again. And um, not that anything about it, I just, I just want to pray. Father God, Lord, I just come to you tonight a willing servant, a vessel that needs to be used, a vessel that is empty, that you can fill, a vessel that you can take and pour out your goodness and your grace. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the anointing that you gave me and the word that you gave me. And I'm ready to to give that word, and I give it to you in Jesus' name. Have your way tonight. Amen. If you would, turn with me in your uh, Bibles to um, Revelations, the revelation of Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ. Amen. You ever, you ever thought about what, that, what the revelation of Christ is? It's revealing the, the, um, the job that Christ had to do to finish it up. That's what that means, okay, the revelation. We're going to reveal it. And we're going to go to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12. And we're going to camp here for a little bit go away from it, and then we're going to come back and camp some more. Right here. Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. I will write on him the name of my God. Think about this. If you're reading it in, in your book, in your Bible, it's, uh, these words are in red, right? Yes. So Christ is speaking these words. This is, what, this is a, also a promise that Christ is, is given out. And he says, I will. Okay? But first, there's a condition. We're going to call this Rocky. In 1976, there was a uh, company that wanted to make a movie. And they took a character that was fictional but had very real um, similarities to it. And they named, named a fellow Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa was, a, was a, basically a street thug. 
that got into boxing was getting have, having a lot of trouble. Get, just was just not doing right. And Rocky was um, was a bully, and uh, he would um, go down to the gym and he, he would he would box and he was just a, a brutal type of, of a fighter. And um, Rocky was a person who was always dipping from the bad side and all of a sudden he'd do one thing good and then now he was good for a little while and then he would fall right back into the bad side again. And it was this, this movie, as, as it progresses, it goes on. What, it's, what it deals with is Rocky was so rough and gruff and, and, and he, had, he had such a demeanor about him that uh, he just nobody wanted to be around him in the first part of the movies. And there was a point in the movie when somebody said, you need a trainer. And um, if you remember the movie, the, uh, the trainer was, was this old guy who was just as rough, just as mean, but he knew how to open up this person and how to take and exploit those great characteristics in this individual. And as the time goes through, he chiseled him into a champion. So when we uh, look at this character, it says, um, finding his possibilities maximized, he rose to the level of champion. In the Word of God, we have a Rocky. And um, the word rock in the Greek is Petra, is actually a place in the Middle East, but it is a, it, it is a, it means rock, a hard place is what that means. The person of Peter is rock. Petra is Peter. Cephas was his Hebrew name, and he was, Jesus named him Petra, rock. And this is what, this is what the character of the trainer called Rocky, the rock, the rock. And that's what, that's what Peter was, was a rock. And there's, there's several different occasions in, in scripture where Peter is talking and you could see that he would, he would make these great declarations. At the same time, he would fumble and stumble and go all the way to the bottom, kind of like the Rocky character, the same way. And as, as uh, when in Scripture, Jesus comes to him and he says, I call you, I call you Peter. And he says, whom says the people say that I am? And they said, some say that you're John the Baptist, a prophet, Elijah. And Peter says, you are the son of the living God. And he said, on this rock, that foundation, I'm going to build the church. Okay? On the rock. Simon Peter rises to the highest heights inside in declaration, but within hours he denies three times even knowing the Lord. We see him both as a saint. We also see him as a sinner, a spiritual giant, and a spiritual dwarf. But in the end, we are touched and encouraged because He's so much just like us. Peter was every man wrapped up in one single person. He's a reflection of our ambitions, fulfilled in a picture of our visible embarrassments, revisited. Yet, whatever the point, 
we see him in the span of the spectrum of his exploits. He flops, whether he is in the pinnacle or the pretzel, showing the right attitude and aiming the right direction. He ends up the en route to the right goal. So when we go back to Revelation, we look at Christ is saying, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. I will write uh, on him the name of my God. And as Peter gets older, you see a different kind of Peter, do you not? There's a different kind of Peter that's a little bit wiser, a little bit... Um, not so quick to blurt out as some people may do. As Peter does, he, he likes to say first and then ask questions later, right? If you'll go to um, 1 Peter chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 3, we see a different side of Peter and what this is, is a, a time that Peter is telling us of where he's been, where we've been. I want you to get a hold of this. Where we've been and how we came through. We're going to start in verse 3. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundance mercy has begotten us again. The word begotten means to be raised up. Who's got us, who's picked us up again, he says. To the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance of incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you. There's promises in here. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you need to be, you have to be grie grieved by various trials. What is that telling you? There's ups and there's downs. Isn't that right, Roddy? There's ups and there's downs in everybody's life. It doesn't matter who you are. That the genius, uh, geniusness of your faith being much uh, more precious than gold that perishes through the test, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not you have not seen, though you, uh, though now you do not see him, yet believing and rejoicing with the joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving to the end of your faith the salvation of your soul. Isn't that a great thought? that after dealing with all these things, we can look back and we can see a man who comes out and he says, you know, I've been through this. I've been down that road that you're at right now. There may be people that are down in that road right now. God says there's a way out. But let me, let's go back just a little bit, little bit. See, you can take 1 Peter, and you can call it Rocky if you want to, because they're about the same. We find the Holy Spirit words breathe into in the promise of for everyone who has ever become maturing disciples. This is our promise. This is our promise that as we mature, we're going to grow and start to walk right in the right path. Peter declares something that about every uh, believer's potential 
as a disease, as a disciple. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 5, and we won't stay there very long. 1 Peter 2 and 5, he gives us another promise here. You also as living stones, here we go, with the rock again. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. Let me, let me stop and give you, this, is, this was not in my notes, and when I studied this again this morning, there was a portion of study that I did years and years and years ago, and um, it was about Christ as he walked along the Sea of Galilee and, and there is Peter, and there is Andrew, and Andrew takes him to Peter, and then as he goes along, he sees John and James. And he, he says these words to them, to both set of brothers. He says, come, I'll make you fishers of men. The Word of God says that they immediately got up off, out of the boat and came with him. Why? That always puzzled me. That always puzzled me. And the reason that they did that is because they were being called by a rabbi. In the Jewish culture, you start out with your studies and you go so far. And you go up and once you've graduated, if you're picked, you'll continue in your studies. And you'll go into the ministry. Okay, these ones that are continued in to the ministry, they're continuing to be taught the Torah and in all of the things of the temple. Well, these men were not in the ministry. They were in the father's business, which was the fishermen. Okay, if you didn't go on in ministry, you went to the family business. So when he come by and he said, come, and I'll make you fishers of men, what he was doing was he was relating to them what he was going to teach them, but using their own thought process, which was fishing. So he was using a parallel to make them understand what he was talking about and how he wanted them to do it. And it, the word says that they immediately dropped their nets and went. Why? because they saw the greatness in what the rabbi was talking about. It was an honor, in other words. It was an honor to have the rabbi say, come. So as we, we look at this, and how do we parallel this to Rocky? Rocky, like any other athlete, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, or whatever, there's levels. And if you can't make it into the next level, then you have to go on and find something else to do, whether it be rodeo, track, car racing, whatever, it doesn't matter. But to have someone to say, come on, come with me and I'll teach you and I will take you and mold you. I will take you and guide you. I will take you and make you and chisel you into this, this hard, steadfast, Rock. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 3. We're introduced to the elements of the master program exceeding man's Peter principle. We, we want to look at it. We look at Peter and we call it the Peter principle. He was taken from this and brought into this. And in Revelations, God gives us God's pillar principle. It gives us a reason to believe. We can pursue growth as disciples in this verse without being plagued with doubt as whether um, we're dreaming beyond reality. This may be a stumbling point for some folks. Are you dreaming beyond reality? 
Mark 11, chapter, uh, Mark 11, uh, verse 23 and 24 says, if you've got a mountain in front of you, if you say to that mountain, be removed, and you believe, guess what's going to happen? You'll get what you say. So are we mountain movers? No, we're mountain destroyers. We're mountain dissolvers. We're people that can take a mountain and destroy it. Christ's words outline his program. Write this down. Faith, creative power, and stability. Faith, he who overcomes. Creative power, I will make him. And stability is a pillar. To understand these words is to believe. Faith. It's not a, it doesn't demand a great giant um, proportions. The word tells us that faith of a mustard seed. When you go to Israel, when you'll go to Israel, there's going to be a place that you'll go down and um, you'll go down, get, get off the bus and walk down and behind the church and go down there and you're looking out over the Sea of Galilee and there is millions and millions and millions of mustard seed plants. And you walk up to them, and depending on time of the year that you get there, if you get there uh, early enough, there'll be a lot of them on, still on the stalk, and you can, you can take them. And the last time that Lena and I went, we got there just too late because the, the tree's still there, but all of the seeds were, had already fallen off. But you can get the mustard seed, and you can see how teeny tiny it is. It says, this much faith is what is required. Just this much. And it's a small, small seed. It's, um, it's only the basic fundamental trust in Jesus. Faith is what is required. That is a faith in what he has done, the confidence in, what he, in who he is, and what he's done for us as the savior of mankind. This is how the Bible defines overcoming. The Bible defines overcoming is faith. It, now let's go back, let me, let me read that again. He who overcomes, he who has faith, and has that unwavering faith. That faith that will, will not give up. That's the overcome. Let's go to 1 John right quick. 1 John in chapter 4. Oh, 5, I'm sorry. 1 John 5. I said it wrong. Verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Underline that. What um, overcomes the world is faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Faith. That mountain dissolving kind of faith. Our commitment to Christ as Savior opens a door. This is what it does. It opens a door. Salvation plants a seed of eternal life inside of us. And within that seed, there's a holy DNA that is destined to grow us, us, grow us, right? Into Christ's likeness. That's what you have inside of you. That little bitty seed that you can pick up grows into Christ's likeness. Creative power. And also creative power is promised in Jesus' words. says, I will make them a pillar. Here Jesus speaks in terms of total opposite of human programs, philosophies, self-help. 
Does anybody know what philosophy, mean, philosophy means? Philosophy is a Greek word. You know, Greek, in a, in a lot of the Greek language, they take two words, okay? You have philo and sophie. Philo, philosophy, philosophy. And I, I only learned one thing out of philosophy in college. One thing, because I hated it. But I learned one thing, philosophy, philosophy, the love of knowledge. Knowledge is great to have knowledge. Relationship is better. Okay? Think about that one. Philosophy is great. The love of knowledge. I want knowledge. You come to my house and I got books stacked up like this. And I know where every one of them's at. And I know what every one of them say because I've been through every one of them three, four, five times reading them. And I buy them books and I'm putting it online. And the, the knowledge that you gain is great. But the relationship is what you need. Okay? So, he says, I will make them a pillar. You can, uh, you can make it happen. You can make it happen. He says, I will make it happen. This is what he's saying to me. The word make encompasses uh, both ideas of shaping something that's already present. Get a hold of this now. Shaping something that's already present but also bringing into existence something that is needing, needed but lacking. He's taken, when he says, I will make them, he's taken what you have and creating what he wants to see. But he's also taking something that you don't have and putting it into to make you better. I, I will make them a pillar uh, equivalently significant to the meaning of this phrase is that the future tense verb conveys an idea of continuous action. What does that mean? It means that it's always continuing to happen. Our Lord promises I will keep making, I will keep creating, I will keep shaping until your possibilities are developed. Just like a trainer. In, in one of the movies, I didn't watch all the movies, but I went through and I, I saw little clips here and there of the movies. I didn't want to go through all that Rocky thing again. But there was one scene in one of the movies, he wanted to teach him how to be quick on his feet. So what did he do? He made a little pin and he put Rocky in the middle of it and he threw a chicken in there. He says, catch the chicken. And you can see this guy trying to, trying to ch catch his chicken, and he couldn't do it. And he's, and he's telling him, come on, come on, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. He eventually learned how to move and head off the chicken where he could pin it into a place where he could get it. Creating possibilities, creating that character, creating and shaping that that uh, person until my pillar project is completed. This way, he's saying, I got the will and the power if you've got the willingness and the availability. Let me say that again. I've got the power if you've got the willingness and the availability. Are you available? to be taught? Are you available to be shaped? Are you available to be molded, chiseled into what Christ has for you? The last word in, the, in this uh, trilogy here is stability. Stability. A strong support to others. Architecturally, uh, architecturally strategic column upon which structures lean and find strength. Well, that sounds good, didn't it? I didn't write that. I found it somewhere. It's pretty cool. He's taking, he's talking about making me, okay, I want to take this personal, all right? 
when, he, when I say it to you, make it personal to you. He's talking about making me into the father of my kids that my kids can lean on. He's talk, talking about shaping me into the husband that my wife can trust. A friend to my associates who they'll know that I, that I won't fail them. Whatever your gender, your circle of influence, this means to do the same thing with you, faithful church member, dependable employee, loving spouse, wise parent, good pastor, considerate boss, helpful neighbor, Jesus is in the business of building power, pillars. I'm sorry, pillars. I can, I will take those who have put abiding faith in me and I will make them dependable disciples. People who will prove to be strategically in my ongoing work of building my church. This is a disciple. This is where we're at. This is what, if you read our, our mission statement, what is it? Does anybody know? Class participation time. Does anybody know? One at a time. First. Make disciples. Miss Tamara, what is it? Same thing. Making, making, creating uh, disciples through leadership. Okay, it takes the leadership to create the disciples. The disciples goes out and does it. And this is what Christ done. Christ done exactly that. Okay, so if I can't. I can't say anything without, I can't end it without giving a chance for someone that may not know the Lord. Maybe you're on the internet, on the television, and you don't know what we're talking about. You don't know this coach that can come in and teach you. His name is Jesus. Everybody with me. Father God, Father God we, thank you we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your, we thank you for, your thank you for your son. We thank you for the comforter that you give to us. Lord, you are so wonderful to us. We bless your name and we thank you in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you are blessed. Amen? Amen? Jesus loves you, and so do we. Amen? Amen. I hope you've listened to the word uh, during this service so that you can have your life changed. You're, you'll see how the DNA of your entire life is about to change. Also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life. Paul says this, in Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's very simple to do that. All I have to really do is say, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Paul said. Many times we have people pray a prayer uh, so that we know that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've let everybody know that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So I want to do that with you right now so that you can literally say, 
Today is the day, and whatever time it is, wherever you're at watching, you'll know that you've had a change in your life. So say this with me. You can bow your head and close your eyes, or you can keep your eyes open. Uh, and uh, I, I always love what uh, Oop Schroner, who is a prophet of God, said. He said, if you're drowning in a swimming pool at the Holiday Inn, you wouldn't want anybody to close their eyes. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're literally drowning in a swimming pool of sin someplace. So say this with me. Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of them. And Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And I commit today that I will live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just did that, then what you just did is you invited Jesus Christ to live in your life, to be the Lord of your life, and you're going to see a complete change in every area of your entire life right now. If you've watched this broadcast, you also know that uh, what we've talked about at different times uh, through different broadcasts is, is finances. If we, the Bible tells us in Luke 6.38 that if we give, that he'll give back to us, press down, shaken together and running over to make room for more. Then it says, uh, right after that, and this is Luke 6, 38. Then it says, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So if you become a covenant partner with us today, there's many things that we do for outreaches here out of this church and out of the ministry. Not only here in Weatherford, Texas, but all over the country and all over the world. We uh, have rodeo events right here in the arena where we have, uh, he paid your fees. Simply means that nobody pays to, to enter. They come, we have a devotional, it becomes an outreach opportunity. And we do that in rodeo arenas, horse show arenas, and roping arenas all over the United States. We drill wells and have uh, crusades in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Uganda, and Tanzania. And by doing each one of those, uh, you become, and becoming a covenant partner with this ministry, you become a part of those outreaches. You take part in the reward in the end time, as well as you get back pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. Because you're a covenant partner, and this is good ground. Bible tells us in another place he gives back. Uh, this is in uh, Mark, the 10th chapter. It tells us that he gives back to us some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Well, this ground has been worked. It has is, is been fertilized. And, and I would expect a 100 fold return on that. So there's a uh, website that you've seen. Do two things. One, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, let us know at that website address and we'll send you some information so that you'll be able to walk that walk and succeed in life in your new Christian life. Also, if you give, there's a donate button right there. If you press that donate button and give, that seed gets planted into good ground, and it comes back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Kathleen and I pray every day over every partner of this ministry. So I want to make sure that we're able to pray for you and, and let us know the things that you may have need of in life so that we can bring them before the Father. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord.